Welcome to today's briefing. I'm Aaron. Let's head over to the Taiwan Strait where Japan, Canada and the United States Navy ships are transiting from the South China Sea to the East China Sea via the Strait of Taiwan. So the, the Pacific Partnership 2023 is wrapping up and a lot of the nations and ships are going home to their home port or their forward deployed port in the case of the American ships and the, the Canadian ships will eventually be heading back over to their home country. One of the big things that came out of the partnership this year was the deterrence by detection ideology. They're gonna be, or we collectively are going to be putting out a lot of assets, including unmanned aircraft and unmanned surface vehicles to monitor the Indo-Pacific region in order to deter uh, bullying and unprofessional and frankly illegal behavior by some nations. So that was a big takeaway from this year's summit or this year's partnership. And uh, we'll see what happens going forward. We are gonna be bringing you uh, those videos as they make them public. So let's head over to the second Thomas Shoal where the Philippine Coast Guard is resupplying the Marines at BRP Sierra Madre again. And keep in mind, the US Navy was just escorting this shipment last or two weeks ago. And this week without the US Navy, we can see what's already happening. The Chinese Coast Guard is back to doing their tactics of trying to get in the way of the Philippine Coast Guard ships again. This video is part of that deterrence by detection uh, methodology. So as these videos come out, like I said, we'll turn and talk about this. This happened just last week where China Coast Guard is blocking the path in frankly a dangerous and illegal way uh, for Philippines to supply their own troops, uh, a handful of Marines. Hard, it's hard to call them troops when there's only like five to 10 guys on this uh, beached uh, craft. But there you go. And I wanted to show you this picture here. This is the third force, if you will, that China has. And uh, those blue fishing boats are called the Chinese Maritime Militia. So China has three forces that we're going to talk about. Uh, the PLAN, which is the actual Navy, think aircraft carriers, destroyers and frigates. Then they also have the Coast Guard, like you see here with the red stripe on the ship, Chinese Coast Guard. And there's a third force called the Chinese Maritime Militia, where their government paid and funded fishing vessels that act as their own fleet, their own Navy, and work with the Coast Guard and the PLAN whenever asked to or ordered to. And that's what's going on right here. Here you can see the small white ship right there. That is the Philippine Coast Guard ship being cornered, hemmed in, if you will, by a Chinese Coast Guard ship here. And then these, uh, these maritime militia ships have him hemmed in there. And there's another Chinese Coast Guard ship up there. So no matter where the Philippine ship goes, there's a risk of collision, which is why they're there in the first place. They're trying to limit his ability to, to maneuver and resupply those Marines on that second Thomas Shoal. This happened the moment the United States destroyer stopped operating with the Philippine Coast Guard. They didn't wait a day. The, the very next shipment, they're back to doing this tactic right here. So we're hoping that by showing this on YouTube and to the world, and of course our politicians are gonna be bringing that to the, you know, the summits like the G20 and the UN to show these videos and just make an example of what China's been doing this entire time. My question to you as a YouTube audience, what can we do in addition to showing these videos to stop this kind of behavior? You know, the Philippines are simply trying to bring food and water to people on a shoal and China's trying to stop that. So is, is there more that we can do? Put those in the comments and I'll take a look at them, okay? All right, let's get to our next story. The big story really of today comes out of Sinpo, North Korea. Uh, this is the largest North Korean shipbuilding facility on the Sea of Japan. And this was an absolute bombshell that came out uh, late last week or over the weekend from H.I. Sutton. Now, I've known H.I. Sutton for years now. The man is an absolute legend in the open source intelligence community. And he somehow got these photos of a brand new North Korean ballistic missile submarine being launched, coming out of its assembly building and being launched into the water there. Kim Jong-un or Il, whoever the new Kim is, I forget their last names, get them all confused together, was there during this uh, ceremony. And this is a modified Romeo class. So this is one of those old Soviet era diesel boats that was sold to North Korea many decades ago. And they're just keep refitting and keeping this class of submarine operational as best they can. 
Uh, you can tell here from these little openings right here, this is a double hauled submarine. So water goes in and out of this freely. And there's a pressure hull inside this outer shell here. Something that'll be more uh, apparent in the next photo is the, is the nose is cut off. There's about estimating between 10 to 20 foot of uh, hull missing from the area forward of the sail here. They've cut something out of the submarine. Not sure what it is. H.I. Sutton speculates that it could be the torpedo room. Uh, it is possible that this ballistic submarine has no torpedoes and no torpedo room, saving weight and uh, a failure point because those torpedo tubes are large hull penetrations that if failed could sink the submarine rather quickly. And it's possible that they just removed all of that all together. A second thing that they could have removed, because I don't see any visible flank arrays here, is I don't see any evidence of any sonar arrays. There's no certainly no toad array on this thing. There's no flank arrays. So it is possible that they perhaps maintained a, you know, a bow array or a syndrolic array there in the forward compartment. Um, there's no evidence of that, though. So because of the lack of weapons and the lack of maybe even sonar systems, this submarine may just be taking its ballistic missile tubes that we'll talk about here in a second out to sea right off the coast and water just deep enough to dive and take it under the surface of the water to launch depth, which is right below the surface. They don't need to go very deep beyond that and just hang out there and be a submerged semi-mobile missile silo platform. Now let's talk about this big structure here, uh, but, but behind the sail, this thing is, uh, very important and very interesting. Initially, we saw 10 hatches on top and we thought, well, they've graduated from a two ballistic missile submarine. The, the first one called Simpo C, by the way, had two uh, ballistic missile tubes right behind the sail. This one has 10. So they went from two to 10 in one uh, gen generational leap. But upon further inspection, you can see that the six uh, missile tubes here at the back hatches anyway, are a lot smaller than the four forward ones. So this appears to be a combination um, of, of different types of weapons. So possibly this thing shoots four ballistic missiles from its missile tubes vertically. And behind that, the six pack that's behind that are for cruise missiles. So you have ballistic missiles followed by cruise missiles with no torpedo tubes is what this new uh, submarine appears to be. Here's another photo of it. The submarine's name is Hero Kim Gung Ok. And it is a snub nose boomer. In other words, they chop part of the nose off. Uh, possibly no torpedo tubes, but 10 missile tubes right there behind the sail in, in that compartment. This could be uh, a modification of their current Sinpo C ballistic missile submarine because there are no photos yet of these two submarines side by side or in the same frame. So they might have taken their one ballistic missile submarine that they had for years called Simpo C back into the assembly building somehow and further modified it. That would be one way of getting this type of submarine out uh, as clean and quickly as they did and quietly as they did. Or they now have two ballistic missile submarines. One that shoots two, has two missile tubes vertically. This one has 10, four for ballistic and uh, six for cruise missiles being launched vertically. Both ships are uh, in the same port, Simpo. And uh, so that we think that they're, uh, that's one reason why we think that they might be the same submarine. So as more photos of this come out, we'll do a little more analysis. I would encourage everyone, if you've never heard of H.I. Sutton, I'm, you're in for a treat. Uh, subscribe to him on Twitter, at H.I. Sutton. And he also runs a website called Covert Shores right here. So you want to go to hisutton.com and check him out. And he has a lot more details. I don't want to steal his thunder because this is his work. And a big congrats on this scoop. H.I. Sutton scooped the world, in my opinion, with this news. Very well done, sir. All right. And we want to wrap up with this uh, USS Lake Champlain, USS Mobile Bay to um, Ticonderoga is right over my head here. Uh, are being decommissioned. They've been decommissioned. It's been done. In the last four weeks, they are gone. And so this begins or continues, I should say, the path of us, the United States Navy, losing our vertical launch systems in a very systematic and methodical way for the next four to five years. Between now and 2028, our vertical launch systems are going to decrease in number. And that's a metric the United States uses to judge 
uh, naval power projection. Our naval power, power projection is going to be reduced between now and 2028, where it will then plateau for at least one year and maybe two to 2030 before we begin rebuilding our VLS count by making new ships and not decommissioning ships with enormous numbers of, of VLS faster than we can replace them. So uh, our strength today will be stronger than tomorrow for the next couple years. So we will, the United States Navy is in decline in terms of power projection. There's lots of other things we do well and get right, but the number of VLS, a key metric for our strength, is being reduced uh, as planned. These ships are old. Uh, they have a long service life of 35 and 37 years respectively. That, that is more than enough uh, expected out of any ship and they've done a great job. And it's just time to get, get rid of them. Uh, it's our own fault that we don't have the capacity to replace them as fast as we built them, uh, but we're working on fixing that. But unfortunately, there is gonna be at least this couple year period where our strength is decreased. So hopefully we get through this transition period peacefully and we can regain a lot of our strength in the 2030s and going forward. And may we learn this lesson that we need to maintain ship building here in the United States and not let it you know, go or close those bases in those shipyards when times are good. And we're thinking we're gonna have peace you know, going forward for many, many generations as we did in the 90s. We thought that that was going to be the new normal and it was for about 20 years until it wasn't. And here we are with no uh, new shipyards. We haven't built a dry dock in 40 years, even though we're building them now. It's been 40 years since we built the last one and we're unable to replace the Navy faster than we're decommissioning it due to its age. So let's not let that happen again. All right, that's today's brief. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, like, su subscribe, and all that stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Oh, real quick, hey, this is Aaron again. Peter Zion just uh, pu published a new video talking about the generals and admirals not being promoted because of a senator. Um, he brings up the security clearance thing. Uh, it's a little more detailed than that. These full bird captains going to rear admiral, for example, would already have more than likely their own security clearance at a high level. I'm talking top secret SCI, and uh, there's nothing above that. So they already have their clearances. Uh, that's not gonna be a problem, but it's still an issue that they're not being confirmed. There will be exceptions to the rule. There's probably one captain out there that for whatever reason doesn't have his clearance. But as these uh, officers, these rear admirals, even though they're unverified right now, are in their new positions today as you're listening to this. They're still performing their duties. They still have their clearances. It's just a formality to get them uh, promoted formally by, by Congress, okay? So I stand by my comments against that senator. Uh, I still think that he is in the wrong. He shouldn't be doing this, but he is holding up uh, the United States uh, military promotions. I think that's a good decision. All right, have a good one, everybody.